How do you listen to music? Since the current year is 2016, while I am creating this video, I'm going to assume the device you use to watch this video is the very same device you use to listen to and find new music with, whether it be your mobile phone, or laptop, or desktop computer. I mean, you can even add gaming system, smart television, smart watch, or even smart refrigerator to the list if you really want to. I'm not judging. As far as I can remember, I could always plug in my headphones into a portable music device and listen to my favorite artists and composers in my head. Private music is a lot like your own little sanctuary or security bubble you can use while you're traveling or you just want to be alone. In fact, I can't even think of a time I left my house without my headphones blasting music while I traveled. Except for this one time I had jury duty and I went to the courthouse without my headphones and I imagined everything was part of this experimental real world dystopian consumerist noise piece that, that kind of sucked. The privatization of portable music is actually a recent human invention. It all began uh, with this weird looking electronic uh, matrix jellyfish looking thing called a transistor. Transistors were invented in 1947 after World War II and are literally the fundamental building blocks of all modern electronic systems. The breakthrough of transistor technology is it made really big things into really small things. And in 1954, Texas Instruments, yeah these guys, and the Industrial Development Engineering Association, get it? It, it says idea. They came together and made the Regency TR1. Calling Dick Tracy. Calling Dick Tracy. Here being assembled in Indianapolis is the next thing in size to that Dick electrical circuits whose complex wiring is literally printed on Dick are one of the factors making possible a radio so small that while it can't quite be strapped to the Dick, it can be slipped easily into an ordinary suit coat pocket. Easily to the Dick. Transistors. Fraction of the current. Vacuum tubes. It was the first ever battery powered mobile radio you can put in your pocket. It hit the market at the consumer price of $49 in 1950s money. Today money that would be $450. And for an extra $7 in 1950s money, you even got a headphone jack. Around the same time, Japanese businessman Masaru Ibuka, founder of Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering Corporation, discovered that AT&T was licensing the transistor and decided to build his own transistor radio for Japan. The engineers at Tokyo Telecommunications created their first ever radio under the name TR55. They then rebranded their company under the name Sony. The transistor radio revolutionized music throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s, shaping the way we consumed music. Now people could listen to music wherever they went. The transistor radio also may have played a key role in shaping the music culture, making rock and roll a big deal. Then in 1964, the compact cassette was created, making high fidelity recording sound easier to carry around with you. So in 1972, a Brazilian-German television executive and book editor, Andreas Pavel, was looking for something to create the soundtrack to his life. So he created the first ever personal stereo cassette player, known as the Stereo Belt. Pavel claimed his invention would multiply the aesthetic potential of any given situation. Later in 1977, Pavel decided to patent his portable music cassette player. The very next year in Japan, Sony co-founder Masuro Ibuka was all like, Hey, you know when I take those business trips to America? The flights are really boring. Can one of you audio engineers make something so I can listen to opera music on the plane ride overs? And audio engineer Nobuta Shikihara was like, Yeah fam, I got you. Here's a totally original concept. It's called the portable cassette player. And then Ibuka was like, damn, th this shit fire, let's sell this to everyone. And that's how the portable music machine known as the Sony Walkman was invented. The Walkman was small, as small as an actual cassette case. However, the Walkman wasn't always known as the Walkman. In America, it was known as the Soundabout, because you can listen to sound while you were about. In Sweden, it was known as Freestyle, because why not? And then in the UK, it was known as the stowaway, because you could put it in your pocket. But Sony co-founder Akio Morita was like, that's stupid, and named them all Walkman. The Walkman was a huge success. If you didn't have a Sony Walkman in the 80s, you weren't cool. 
The Walkman literally made the 1980s the 80s, because as soon as you put one on, you would want to go rollerblading down the street wearing neon day glow colored clothes. The Sony Walkman is a tiny stereo cassette player with truly incredible stick. Put on a Walkman and see the world in a whole new light. Sony Walkman. The Walkman from Sony, the one and only. The Walkman even had not one, but two headphone jacks, so you can listen to music with someone else. I, I mean, if you could even get a significant other Badoom Tish audience laugh. So anyways, when Andrea Pavel heard The Walkman, he was like, Hey, fuck you, that's my idea, I'll see you in court. And literally 25 years later, in 2010, Pavel got 10 million dollars from Sony. You see everyone? The system works. However, that was only a small fraction of what Sony made off the personal cassette player. Between its release in 1979 and 2010, Sony sold over 350 million units and made several billion dollars off this tiny device. Originally released at the price of $275 times 350 million, that's a lot of zeros. The digital age of music began when Sony and Philips came together and created the compact disc. This circular plate of microscopic laser grooves provided 78 minutes of skippable high quality ones and zeros. In the prophetic year of 1984, Sony revealed the Discman, a 4 CD case high device that lets you skip tracks and that was mad unheard of at the time. Sold at the surprisingly low price of 50,000 yen or about 475 American money, this device single-handedly accelerated the spread of digital music sales and CD skyrocketed. The Discman of course ruled music distribution throughout the late 80s and 90s. Things were about to change at the beginning of the new millennia that would shake the foundation of the music industry forever. But first, here's a word from our sponsors. Do you have mesothelioma? You do? I'm, I'm sorry. Now, now let's go to our, our commercial break. With the invention of the portable mp3 file in 1993, and the rise of home computing in the 90s, people began burning their CD collections onto their computer hard drives. Taking advantage of this, the first ever portable MP3 was created in 1997 by South Korean company Sehan Information Systems, under the name the MP Man. It later sold to the American markets through Iger Labs, under the name Iger Man. There were two MP3 player models, the F10 with 32 megabyte storage, or six songs, and the massive F20 with 64 megabytes of storage, or 12 songs. In January of 1998, the first ever spoken word MP3 player was released by Audible.com, known as the Audible Player. It sold for $200, and you would get two hours of really compressed spoken word audio. Don't forget to use my Audible link in the description to sign up for your free Audible book you probably won't even listen to. Then in September of 1998, the Diamond Rio by Diamond Multimedia was released and had a huge success during that Christmas season, causing the Recording Industry Association of America to sue the fuck out of them. The lawsuit failed, however, letting portable digital music grow even further. Then in 1999, Compaq developed its first ever commercially sold hard disk MP3 player with the personal jukebox, which had a whopping 4.8 gigs of memory, or advertised 1200,000 songs. Then in October of 2001, Apple Computer unveiled their game-changing iPod with a 5 gigabyte hard drive and 2 inch monochrome screen display. The iPod became the fastest selling portable music device of all time, selling 350 million units, which is approximately three times faster than it took the Sony Walkman to sell the same amount. The iPod revolutionized the way we listen to music, by metaphorically and literally killing off the CD. But the latest innovation was just around the corner. In the mid-2000s, mobile phones were getting smaller and getting more storage space. The first phones with MP3 players were released in South Korea. In 1999, the Samsung SPH M2100 was the first mobile phone with MP3 playback. 
By 2005, more than half the phones in South Korea had MP3 playback capabilities and affected the way people downloaded and listened to music. Apple, seeing the change in mobile technology, released their own version of a mobile phone in 2007 with the first iPhone. After this pivotal moment, the race was on. Literally all mobile phones had some form of music playback, and the MP3 player eventually faded out of style. Currently, mobile phone technology is the leading device for portable music listening, with various streaming platforms injecting music straight into your ears. The history of streaming music is a whole nother can of worms, and frankly, I'm just too lazy to, to talk about it. So yeah, uh, how do you listen to music? Do you listen to music on your all-encompassing mobile computer camera music player thing that we all have in our pockets now? If, if you want to support this channel, listen to my music. Uh, that's it. Bye. I'll see you next video.